All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the AEM AI and AEM Content Science Platform. My name is Odisse Tremoulis. I'm from Adobe France. I'm really happy to, to host you on these sessions that will be mainly around AI and those two innovative uh, projects that are AEM.AI and AEM Content Science Platform. That's my first time at the ADAPT2 as a speaker. I've attended uh, the previous year as, a, as an attendee, and I'm really happy to, um, to share with you this, uh, this, uh, those projects. All right, so just to introduce me, uh, some, some facts. I'm with, um, so I'm with Adobe since a long time. I'm an AEM consultant. Maybe I have, uh, have uh, met some of you on some projects. So I was an AEM consultant for three years. And then now I'm a multi-solution architect for since four years, dedicated on AI at, uh, at Adobe, mainly working on AEM. Um, from a private perspective, I'm a machine learning addict. Uh, let, let's say it. I'm, uh, I'm working on PyTorch, TensorFlow, and Horvod frameworks as a developer. So that's three frameworks that are used for machine learning. Um, and I will have a word later on on that. And then I'm also a fan of what we call the low-cost distributed le uh, computing. So you might be familiar with distributed computing. That's some kind of a big computing uh, across different computers. But just to mention what is it, when we talk about distributed computing, uh, you might have that in mind, a range of uh, full servers, a lot of big clouds, a big data center with a lot of powerful computer. But actually, if you add the low cost in front of the distributed computing, uh, it's another kind of data center that you have. It's more like uh, this uh, with homemade computer, with homemade computer and those kind of uh, computer, which is made uh, principally of uh, GPU card, NVIDIA GPU card. Anyway, that's a, a kind of passion that I wanted to share. All right, let's plug AI into AEM. Um, we had a lot of subjects. Maybe some of you went to Santosh session yesterday where he mentioned the AI functionality that existed into AEM. And we will try today, I will try to explain a much, uh, to give a much broader visions of AI into AEM. So if we look at AM, AI and the current state of AM to today, AM has already a lot of AI functionalities, very high quality, very powerful functionalities. Thanks to Adobe Sensei that provide those functionalities. But actually there are plenty of other capacities, capabilities on AI that you can bring to AM. But looking at the current state, just as a refresher, uh, I'm sure you, you know the smart image and smart video tagging, the smart crop, smart translations, smart form conversions that are all um, AI API provided by Adobe on, uh, on, uh, on AEM. And thanks to the AI platform, Adobe Sensei. They are, uh, so that was the, that was what Santosh mentioned yesterday on his workshop, uh, the content and commerce AI, that's new features that are coming uh, into AEM. So we have first the logo classifications, uh, where you can have a lot of assets within the DAM, the AEM DAM, and we will recognize the logo. So that's what is on the, uh, on the left of my screen. And on the right, you have the facial recognitions where we will recognize the face of some persons that uh, talk on videos, on images of a particular brand, right? So those are two, two of the new functionalities that are distributed as part of the content and commerce AI. And they are uh, beta, they are in private access at the moment and they will be released, uh, I guess, end of this year. But 
when we talk about AI, there are much more things that what is available right now on AEM. If we talk about chatbots, we need to have a conversation with, with someone typing on the website. If you look at the e-commerce websites that are online now, they all have a chatbot. Then text analysis as well, video transcriptions or natural, natural language capabilities on search. All those things are not accessible on AEM as of now because they are not developed by Adobe. And all those AI capabilities that exist on the market are much, much larger. So if we step back on the on these pyramids of AI capabilities within AEM, actually, so the current state of AEM, it's all those um, functionalities provided by Adobe Sensei, but we can go a step further with AI. And that's why there is this new community project named uh, AEM.AI that will connect AEM with third party AI services with Amazon, Azure, or even partners AI platforms. Actually, it's an, it's an open ecosystem as we will see it, but you can connect any AI API directly in AEM to benefit from it. So that's what we call AEM.AI. All right, so AEM.AI. AEM.AI, it's an open source project. It's completely available on GitHub. Um, I really insist on that. Uh, that's a community project. So even if I am on, from Adobe, there is nothing official here. Please don't run into the engineering uh, manager asking, oh, wait, where is the AEMAI? So it's fully available on GitHub. You can, you can participate on it, of course. And it does the integrations with third-party AI services by including, for example, the AWS Java SDK version one and version two as an OSGI uh, bundle. And even Azure bundle, the, the Azure SDK, we include that into AEM as, a, as an OSGI bundle to benefit from all the services that Amazon, Azure, and the partners platform can bring into AEM. If we look at some of the services that are already integrated into AEM.ai, well, first, uh, how do they integrate with AEM.ai? It's quite simple. Here, we have AEM on one side, then it connects to all the, uh, the machine learning and the intelligent services that are, that are provided by the cloud service providers like Amazon and Asia. Amazon has some of them named Recognitions, Comprehend, Forecast, and Azure has um, the Cognitive Services. All right, so if we look at some uh, of the functionality that are provided by AM.AI, there is one that is named Advanced Tagging. So Advanced Tagging will take an image here directly that you can add into AM assets. So there, here, there is a, I put an image of Brad Pitt. And first, this image will be sent to AWS, and AWS will send back some bounding boxes. Some, it will do some recognition of that image. So here, uh, looking at the left, the bounding, uh, bounding boxes renditions, we can see that the uh, AI services of AWS has recognized multiple persons on that image, even the blurred one on the background. So it's quite, it, it provides quite an accurate uh, recognition of that image. And he has, of course, recognized the main person that is on the image. If we look on the right, there is this advanced tagging that is done on the image. So if we look at the label and tags, it's quite different from what um, the smart tagging, the smart image tagging is providing. Here on the detected labels, we can see that we have the tag plus the probability of that tag. So we recognize that it's a person, that it's a human, that it's a fa fashion. More interesting, we recognize that it's a premiere as well. 
Um, so we recognize that Brad Pitt is actually at the premiere of a movie. And we can even recognize that it's a red carpet premiere and it has a red carpet in the background with a probability of 97% uh, tag of the tag, right? Then on the second column, we have the face and celebrities recognition. So we recognize that it's Brad Pitt at 100%. Uh, we have a less accurate age range of 36 to 52 um, years old. So he has a burn somehow with a, an accuracy of 86%. Maybe that's the place of the burn on the, on the face. An emotion that is disgust. So this is not accurate at all, but we have a, a, a probability of 1% on that tag. And then over uh, tagging, I had glass, false, I had open, true, gender, male, at, uh, with a probability of 99%. And we could even detect some text on the image. So here, um, actually, when I have done the testing, it could detect the STR behind, uh, on, on the background, but with a very low probability. And that's why I have set some probability. So you can say, I, I just want the tags with um, uh, a minimum probability to be shown on the UI. All right. So that's the first, that's the first feature, the AEM.AI uh, advanced tagging. Then there is another one, um, the AEM that AI the digital identity. So you have nice picture of me playing with the uh, face ID like. So you, it's exactly the same features that you have on your phone when it recognizes your face. But actually, it's in AEM that AI with a component where you can recognize your face. So. On the left, you have me being authenticated on uh, on my website uh, just by looking at my face. And on the right, you have me playing with my hand in front of my face where I don't get recognized and so I don't get authenticated to the website. And so here, uh, so on AEM.ai, it's comparing the image uh, uh, on the, that it has on the camera with the, the image that he has on the profile of the person. Right? And this could, could be used for authentication. So you can use it to authenticate on your website, but as well, you could use it to authenticate on AEM. That could be a nice idea. Or it can be to identify someone or even to make some payments. If you have an e-commerce website and you want to authenticate some payments, instead of asking for the credit card, you can ask for face ID recognition just by plugging in AEM with the AWS services. So from here, we have benefited uh, from those uh, services. And soon, we plan to integrate more AI services the, uh, where the author could write content just by speaking. So just using, the, for example, the Alexa services, where the author will just speak and it will write content instead of typing it, then we can have voice and chatbots as well by connecting with AWS or even with Azure services. And we have this product demand planning that we will release as well, where we connect AEM with Magento. We gather all the ordering for Magento and we do some forecasts of the ordering and you can, um, you can plan some promotion on AEM depending on the forecast of the uh, team and plan. All right. So that's, um, you can see that AEM that AI connects with third party services, but as well, it provides much more uh, capabilities that you can implement yourself using, uh, over using the SDK that are already embedded into it. Um, yeah, and connect over platform. And that's, that's the case because that's already the case because it's an open, uh, it's an open ecosystem. So I say we have AWS and Azure already connected into it, but we have many places to connect to over platform. And we got the interest from Capgemini for that. Capgemini has a very uh, strong and powerful AI platform with a lot of customer using it. 
and we discuss to integrate that platform directly with AEM.ai. So we AEM could benefit from all those services that Capgemini's uh, expertise or has expertise on. And that's, a, that's the case. We are um, implementing uh, a new use case here, a new functionality, which is the uh, natural language search. So it's powered by Capgemini AI platform, which is particularly named KISS platform. And what we can do is we can do semantic queries with, and we get back score probability, synonyms, search suggestions. So here, that's a screenshot of what we do for the European Union with a lot of PDF. And you can see that on the, on the search request, I've, I've typed malnourished children in child, uh, in Chad, sorry. And uh, the, um, the KISS platform from Capgemini return all the documents. Um, so first, the KISS platform understand the query and will uh, return all the text and the documents with a score, so still a probability, and with some keywords that they could find on the document, all right? There are many other things like highlighting the, the specific piece of text where uh, that might be interesting and so on. All right, so we've seen, um, yeah, just, of, just the last word, it's also, it will be also supported in AEM content and commerce. So it will be also official support, officially supported by Adobe on the content and commerce AI beta. All right, so we've seen that from the AEM current state that we use, uh, we, we are pouring by Adobe Sensei, all the in-house AI functionalities that Adobe provide. Now with this uh, open source project, AEM.ai, we have a new, uh, a new layer, a new capacity to connect with Azure, with AWS to gather new, uh, new AI services. But there is one step further actually. There are plenty of AI services that exist on the market or even AI services, AI models that exist and that no one uh, uh, that no one provides services for it. So imagine that someone um, say, "Okay, I have these machine learning models that I've built on my own." Then, if AWS or Azure doesn't provide it, you are you will not have the capacity capacity to use it. That's why we add this third layer of where we can do data science and we can use the state-of-the-art AI models. And that's what we name AEM CSP, AEM as a content science platform. And actually it match very great because AEM has all the contents, all the assets, all the videos, all the documents that we need to train AI models, to train, to train machine learning models, right? And they are, uh, just as I mentioned, there are plenty of cool AI models that exist and that are not yet provided by Amazon. So if you want to provide nice feature to your business user, then you could use those uh, AI models if you embed it into AEM content science platform. So there is, a, there is a model for face recognitions, object detections, uh, face generations, image generations with the uh, image of cats. So there, there might be no direct link uh, within AEM, of course, but uh, you might find very cool models that exist. So let's take an example uh, of an AI model that we can use uh, within AEM. There is, a, there is a model that is named uh, image captioning. And so you might recognize that image, that's a popular image from We Retail. We took that image and we use a model that existed on the market that is not available on Amazon's, on Asia yet. And so we took this machine learning models and we uh, send, we use that image on the machine learning models. And the machine learning models generated a piece of text 
directly from that image. He will understand the image, the object on the image, and what we call the attention points on that image. And so the machine learning models from the market generated that sentence, a woman stretching with her arms to the left and up. The fact is this, uh, this sentence is quite generic, right? Because it hasn't been trained especially uh, on the AEM content, but it has been trained on some generic content. And so the fact is with AEM content science platform, we could directly build our own AI model or take the AI model that exists on the market and train the content that is on the AEM directly on the model. And then we could get a specific sentence after that. Lisa A stretching with the We Retail Soleil tunic by recognizing the person, so the face detections, but as well recognizing the product on it. All right, so that's just an example. Let's, let's focus on AEM CSP. AEM CSP, so it's a content science platform, and uh, it follows exactly a typical AI workflow. On the, when you work, uh, when you want to release a new machine learning models or a new AI models, you first define your problem, then you will pre prepare the content for that, and that's where AEM comes into place. And then you create your AI model from that. Once you have created your AI model, you will train the AI model with the content coming from AEM. And finally, once it's trained and it works, you will do the inference step where it's just putting your model into productions. So if we look at the technology that we use for that, so first to prepare the content, we use the AEM because AEM has, thanks to the workflow on AEM, it can prepare the content automatically. Then we've created the AI model using three frameworks. So that's frameworks that is used, uh, that are really popular and that are named PyTorch, TensorFlow, and MXNet. So PyTorch is done by Facebook, TensorFlow done by Google, and MXNet by Apache. And then it's hosted on a Jupyter, um, on a Jupyter, on a server that is a, a data science server that is named Jupyter. And finally, for the inference, we use um, a web server that is named Flask uh, to deliver the content directly to AEM. And we are evaluating another approach with Apache with the mod WSGI. All right, let's look at the architecture. Uh, AEM is uh, the architecture of AEM CSP. So we have AEM that is uh, an, the content science server on the side that is pulling, re, uh, pulling content from AEM. By pulling the content, we will train our AI model on it and create this uh, and train this AI model. But actually all those framework for the machine learning uh, models are done on uh, Python. So the content science server only work in Python. And to communicate with AEM, we have to create uh, a library for that that is named AEMPy. So it's a Python library for AEM that uh, will allow us to communicate with AEM directly. Then once your uh, machine learning model is trained, we will push that model directly to Flask. So Flask, it's a, it's a framework as well, that uh, it's a small uh, web server that will let us uh, do the inference part and push back the results to AEM. So AEM will be able to request uh, Flask directly to say, for example, if we take, if we take the image captioning uh, example, AEM will say, okay, I send you the image, send me some piece of text for that image and Flask will be able to, uh, to use the model that we have trained and send back the, 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 the answer. The last part of that is, of course, the browser and the consumers. Uh, the consumer use Firefox, Chrome, or Internet Explorer, and we have even some uh, frameworks that exist on the client side that is named TensorFlow.js, provided by Google, where you can directly use your AI model on the browser. It provides a lot of other functionalities um, that I could share if we have time at the end. All right, let's look at AEMPy. 
AM Pi, it's the Python library for AM. It's very simple. You might not be familiar with uh, Python, but actually it's quite, it's quite, it's quite uh, straightforward to work with Python. You just do the import, AEMPy, then you instantiate AEM, then you can, uh, actually you have two ways to instantiate it because you can specify the user and password, or you can even specify the URL of your AEMPy, of your AEM instance. And by connecting to AEM, you are capable of requesting any contents directly on AEM. So for example, here uh, we request an asset. And uh, so first we build the asset object, then on the one we request an image. So I request an image on the DAM, and then I display it, and I can play with the properties of that image as well. Uh, so if for some of you who were on the workshop yesterday, we played with the system uh, API, so aempy.system directly connect to the Felix console. And then from that, we can get to the system console, sorry. And from that, we can get the logs and directly work on the logs and do some analysis on the logs. Here, uh, as a content science server, here there is a, a UI of uh, the aempy and the content science server that connects to AEM do some requests on it, like requesting an image. And from that, we can build some reports, actually, that are much more easier to build on Jupyter, on the content science server, that it could be uh, on, a extent, on any of our solutions. So for example, here I'm showing the image distributions. And actually, I will uh, just speed up a bit to do the demo. Right, so I'm on AEM. I guess you can see uh, my Firefox, and I will log in into AEM. I broke the background, by the way. So here I log into AEM, and you might have noticed a new entry here, which is Content Science. If I click on Content Science, I go into the Content Science project, and uh, I have two, um, so I have two examples here. The first one is the log prediction. It's the one that we play with yesterday. If I open it, might take a second. So here I open the logs predictions. You can notice that I have access to my full UI of AEM. I have plenty of uh, uh, weird images here, but that was to train my AI model. So here, just by working on the logs, I can, for example, so I have to switch on preview. I can work on the log of AEM. Here, I'm downloading some uh, error.log files. I'm seeing the files. And you can see that I can execute all the uh, lines directly from here. Right? And at the end, so here, I'm training my model. I don't want to spend time on that. But just to show you the uh, how it could work, the integrations, here at the end, I'm showing that I can do some pattern recognitions on the log and do some prediction as well of what could be, um, what could be some, some logs that could crash my instance. If I go to the image captioning, uh, image captioning uh, notebook, here I could execute uh, I could execute all my content, and f as you can see, I could query all the content directly on AEM. So it might take some time to load, but here, as long as it, there is a star, so I have my first query, querying an image here, querying an image, and here I'm displaying the same image that I have seen. Here I'm playing with the data, so I don't want to explain all those line of codes. That might not be interesting, but I, at the end, I want those lines to uh, train an AI model and to, uh, to generate a sentence from that image. And unfortunately, I won't have the time to show you until the end. But as you can see, there is um, here with AEMPy, you can directly uh, use the content from AEM and create uh, some nice. Uh, some nice reports. 
Every, all the examples are available on AMPy here. You have all the notebooks here. And as I am uh, running over time, I would just mention on the last slide that they are, uh, we are planning to deliver my new ML models where we generate mockups to components, to AEM components, and where we do uh, image generation, where we generate text to an image. And those three projects are completely uh, open source, so you can you might uh, you might try fork and contribute if you're interested, of course, uh, to those projects. Right. Thanks. I know that uh, Stefan gave me five minutes uh, more for questions. So if you are uh, if you have any questions. So uh, I have one questions. One first question is the face detections GDR, GDPR compliant are set with a detected person marked with the same tag. That's a very good question. And because we have a service that when someone deletes his user account, then uh, the AI service, actually the Amazon AI services can scan all content to see if we retrieve the face of that person on that content. So it's not yet GDPR compliant, but we can plan to make it. All right. There is no more question. We can stop here if, as I'm running over time already. All right, thank you everyone.